to be honest, the normal way that the God operates, not that, that I'm speaking on behalf of God, but just from my own experience and from most people's experience, when you deal with people in spiritual direction, usually at the beginning of prayer, when we start things, usually there's a bit of a honeymoon period. Mm. Usually things go quite well and, uh, and we feel attracted or drawn to prayer, to this type of prayer. But like any relationship, the honeymoon period comes to an end at some point. And therefore, different questions then begin to emerge. And you kind of focus back on the question, am I in this relationship because of what I'm getting out of it? Or I'm in this relationship because what I can contribute to this relationship? And it's the same with prayer, because suddenly, very quickly, you know, we become aware of how self-centered we can be, that we can be there because we're saying we're, we're spending time to be with God, but sometimes we can be there because we want to have a good feeling or a good experience of God rather than being present to God. And that was one of the difficulties I encountered in my prayer. Uh, that kind of praying once in a retreat with um, lowering your nets and having a huge expectation okay, that I was going to receive something from God. And then after a few hours when nothing was happening, I realized I was disappointed. And when I stayed with the feeling of disappointed, I realized that I had an expectation, which was not God's expectation. And the only thing I caught in the net was myself. And that was a big fish to catch in the net. And what I realized was that, what I realized then was that I had gone into prayer with a certain expectation of how God was going to operate, but he didn't operate according to my expectation. And that was my ego at work. And I had to realize, therefore, that, okay, I thought I was here praying. I thought I was here being present to God, but really I was there with an expectation. And when you have expectations, it's very difficult to be present. And then I was very deflated when I realized, oh, my God, I actually wasn't praying at all. And I was there more for myself than being present to God. And then I felt annoyed and angry with myself then. So the deflation gave way to that. And I, I saw these birds trying to build their nest in a, in a hole of a tree. And this bird kept flying with this twig in its mouth, trying to put the twig into the tree. But every time I put it in, it was too big. So the twig kept falling. And it kept flying down and repeating it again and again and again. And there was me getting more annoyed when I looked at the bird. I says, you stupid bird. Will you never learn that you've got to put your head sideways to get that twig into the tree? Eventually he did it. But I realized the reason why I was so annoyed, because what the bird was doing was exactly what I had been doing. I was trying to build my own nest and get God in the way I wanted God to come to me in prayer. But I had to learn God does not operate according to our script. He operates in his own way, but his script is even more wonderful than the one that you have. Because after that period of deflation, I was torn between praying with Psalm 60, which is, oh God, you're my God, for you I long, for you my soul is thirsting, or meditating on the cross. And I didn't know which one to do. So I decided then I would pray with the psalm and then meditate on the cross. But an hour and a half later, I was still with the psalm because God had taken over. And in that psalm, when I was praying, it became a dialogue between God and myself. It was almost as if Jesus was on the cross speaking to me in and through the psalm. So the first part was what I was saying, oh, God, you are my God. For you, I long. For you, my soul is thirsting. That he was responding my body on the cross, my body pines for you like a dry, weary land without water. So I gaze on you on the sanctuary to see your presence. So it was like this dialogue between God and me, not that I was initiating, but it happened because I had to let go of my expectations and allow God to take over. And when we allow God to take over, it's amazing what God can do in our hearts and in our minds. That's why I want to stay with that. That's more essential to know that we can be working hard at prayer, but God is even, our desire for God is nothing compared to God's desire for us. 
And God doesn't make empty promises. The key thing, as I said before, is perseverance, especially when you feel nothing is happening, when nothing is going on, because that is when God is most at work, breaking in and through our defences and being present to us. If you liked what you just saw and would like to see the full interview, click on the Watch More box above or else click on the link in the description box below. Make sure to also click on the subscribe button above so as to receive more regular content. Thank you.